Hello and welcome back to Quarterlight, your card brochure channel. And in today's episode, the Alfa Romeo Alfetta, GT 1.6 and GTV 2000. Welcome back and if you're new to Quarterlight, we're a card brochure channel here on YouTube at car brochures from around the world for the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s and sometimes beyond that as well. So if you're interested in cars and car brochures, please consider subscribing. Anyway, back to today's episode, we've got this lovely, um, rather on the smaller side, an Alfa Romeo Alfetta GT 1.6 and GTV 2000. This particular brochure is a UK brochure, although looks like a little bit of a one of those very small Italian number plates on this particular example and of course it's showing a left hand drive car as well now it's dated and there's kind of like a code on the uh, but it's for 1978 and I do believe it's from February 78 although I've seen earlier brochures of this dated 76 and they look identical from the uh, front cover as well now these ran from 1974 to 1987, so a really long run, although by 1980 that Alfetta name was dropped and it was just simply known as the Alfa Romeo GTV 2 litre. Kind of like lost the name and it went for a more like grey plasticky uh, front bumper type look. But for me, these earlier ones are the more beautiful in my opinion and think of these in like 1974 they look really I think the, 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 the design has really lasted well a really good design and for me Alfa Romeos I always think the earlier you go back for an Alfa Romeo the more beautiful it is I know people rave how beautiful you know a 90s Alfa Romeo 156 is I don't think that anything compared to these earlier Alfa Romeos in my honest opinion Anyway, this is a smaller size brochure. I've just popped a pen there just to give you an idea of scale to show you. You know, it's not a full size brochure. But anyway, let's open the brochure up and have a look inside. And this particular brochure very much reminds me of earlier brochures from the 60s where they kind of like opened up into like a poster style brochure. This is exactly what this is going to do. Um, we've opened it one way to get this larger size. Lovely view of the rear of this GTV version. But we'll start with the text and we'll have a closer look at these images. So it starts by telling us the Alfetta Coupe versions are cars of outstanding sports car characteristics. Intended for a public seeking lively response, coupled with careful attention to mechanical design, safety equipment, low fuel consumption, high comfort and lasting quality. A little bit of a nod there to low fuel consumption because, you know, 70s, a bit of a fuel crisis. Um, so, you know, and I don't think they really sold that well because of that. Not as well as the previous models anyway. Uh, the Alfetta GT 1.6, a 1570cc, covers a standing kilometre in 32.8 seconds. The Alfetta GTV 2000, a 1962cc engine, covers a standing kilometre in 30.6 seconds. And then we get this lovely rear shot, and it looks so good from the back. I think it's just such a beautiful car, you know, in true Alfa Romeo spirit. The GTV little bit of a well it's more than a badge isn't it even that's the design of that following on from the window looks really nice so obviously this is the um two liter version a beautiful looking car look how shiny the exhaust is on this one that's certainly not been anyone but i even like those wheels as well it just looks overall a well designed car and like i said earlier i do prefer these ones with the chrome bumpers but it's not just on the outside, it's interesting on the inside as well, I think. Very much a sports steering wheel. Looking straight on, no, not the speedometer, you're looking straight onto the rev counter. Really showing, you know, this is a driver's car and then this very interesting gauge um, to one side with the speedometer and other gauges. 
just interesting all round I think and then we open the brush up to its full size really making a very small brochure all of a sudden look like a very big brochure starting with these seats at the top we'll have a look at some of the text it gets a bit wordy in places but we'll have a look at some of the text and then a closer look at these seats so it tells us it's a sports coupe with the comfort of a saloon. The interior of the Alfetta coupe is like a tastefully furnished room in modern style. The seats, which are deeply contoured, have facings of velvet or tartan fabric or Tex Alpha. And the door and seat panels match. The floor is fully carpeted. Four anatomically designed and comfortable seats fitted with side armrests and grips for all passengers. Access to the rear seats is made easy by sliding the front seats forward which automatically tilts the seat. Ample luggage space of 12.9 cubic feet is provided. Let's start talking about the ventilin, ventilation and heating. Dual controls enables the driver and passenger to control the quantity and direction of airflow. And then it's got wind down windows are fitted at the front and rear. Quarter lights are also provided at the front. Hurrah. And then it you know, tells us about the soundproofing. Then we have a look inside on this red example with these nice lights, also uh, a blue seat. I'm presuming this is the velour seat because it really looks lovely. You just want to go in there and sit in it because it just looks like a really nice place to be. Looks like, like I say in the text, there's a few seat options. There's also this tartan type designed on this light blue stroke silver example. And there's more of a yellowy. Uh, shade uh, again a really nice looking seat and even the door cards are actually different on this particular seat and then we get this sort of nice little image on the bottom left hand corner showing the luggage and some text let's just have a look at the text first though first of all it starts talking about weight distribution improved stability the Alfetta coupe versions have the engine at the front and the clutch gearbox and transaxle assembly at the rear. This means that the weight of the mechanical parts is distributed equally on each axle, providing ideal balance for the stability and road holding of the car. Then we get some information on the safe axle assembly. A DD on the axle is fitted at the rear with vertical control by means of a Watt parallelogram. The combination means that both in straight line, driving on the bends, the tyres remain perpendicular to the ground, ensuring that the whole of the width of the tread bears on the road surface. And of course, Alfa Romeo was always renowned um, for being a really much a driver's car and sort of a great car in the corners. And then it's talking about the coefficient of being 0.39 due to the wedge type shape, a front spoiler, roof and rear window line, a rear spoiler and a cut off tail which reduces airflow. So very, very much a detailed brochure really but um, I always find the older the brochure is the more technical they tend to get. But then we get this very unusual image of the luggage compartment. Obviously a really high sill isn't it to lift anything in there for a start off but could you really fit all those bags into this GTV version spur wheels are actually kept in the boots I was kind of like thinking well it's an exceptionally deep boots but with the spur wheel is the top of the spur wheel is probably going to be in line with the top of that bumper it's going to be a squeeze into it I think we'd have to at least remove this um parcel shelf off the back there unusual image though then we get this unusual and quite technical image of kind of like designing the driving seat perfectly designed for the driver and then all these letters referring to you know the angles of the person I, you know, this might be controversial but I've never found Alfa Romeo's really have a particularly nice driving position for me at least um, but there we go 
that's showing you it is indeed the perfect driving seat and then we fold it all back and then we suddenly remember this is only a very small brochure in fact the camera is struggling at this uh, size to actually focus too well in technical specifications so let's zoom straight in side by side we've got technical specification for the two models the 1.6 and the 2 liter 1.6 has got that 1570cc uh, the 2000 the 1962cc both uh, four cylinder inline engines 109 horsepower at 5600 rpm for the 1.6 120 oh, oh, sorry 122 i should say horsepower at 5300 rpm and then we got some information about the torque and the revs and the dimensions maximum speed for the 1.6 is 111.87 miles per hour the 2 litre can do it 120.57 miles per hour and remember you know this brush is from 78 pretty quick car for the time actually and then we get more technical specifications the carburation to double choke horizontal carburetors valve operators or red valves arranged in a v uh, and then information about the ignition electrical system clutch gearbox it's a manual gearbox with five speed so a five speed gearbox that's a little bit advanced for the mid 70s really isn't it um, front suspension information and rear suspension rear axle steering brakes we've got discs on all four wheels and of course if you want to read this in more detail of course you can pause the screen but when you really look at the te technical information you can't like realize this wasn't really an ordinary car it was a little bit advanced for the time and then we get some uh, nice little diagrams showing the dimensions and you can see where that spur wheel is kept pretty much in line with the top of that bumper so you know maybe you could get them all all that luggage in there but you'd have to have it perfectly arranged i think and then some information about the brochure we can see they're printed in italy 782573 the first 78 is indicating 1978 the number two is indicating february so there we go what beautiful cars these alfa romeo alfettas were do you remember these i do prefer the 70s ones actually i think they look a little bit nicer with these small little chrome bumpers and the chrome around the windows i think they look really good and a car design that really lasted the test of time unfortunately rust was a big issue at least in the uk the rain the salt on the roads i don't think they lasted too long on british roads unfortunately i'm sure they fared a lot better in their native land southern italy i'm sure they, they were perfectly okay but like i said fortunately in the uk rust was an issue and it certainly put a lot of people off thank you so much for watching course light today um i always appreciate you uh, watching and of course commenting on your views and of course your memories of these beautiful cars if you've not done so already please do like and subscribe the channel's growing nicely every little bit helps and thank you for everyone who has done so but for now we'll say take care and goodbye